keep in mind is that just because someone put in a new furnace doesn't mean that you're, you know, you added an $8,000 furnace doesn't mean that your value in your house is worth $8,000 more, you know? So is it for us, it's a lot about being able to go in and understand the value of what consumers are going to find value in. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bamford and Co podcast. My name is Gary. I'm sitting here with Ryan and Greg Bamford and we have a lot of fun doing these things because well they're fun guys and we're always so happy to have them here and we're going to talk about some more stuff involving realty and uh, I'm going to jump right into it here boys. So uh, Greg to you first. Uh, basically I'd like to know what's happening in the market and what's most in demand when it comes to what people are talking about out on the streets there well first off i'd like to comment that we phoned each other and we decided to all dress in the same same t-shirt today so this is uh, my business my business casual wear okay perfect. i had to take off the macho man shirt you know because <laughs> i want to be professional here so i had a black shirt and i'm like you guys are doing it so let's just join and cash this bad boy i'm in i'm all about it <laughs> uh but yeah yes all, so all, jo- all, all jokes aside yes uh the the market continues to stay what we consider as hot we don't have enough inventory uh currently in saskatoon we have right now 419 single family houses uh, available that aren't under contract. And a lot of those actually, I think it was like 93 of those actually uh, were new properties that wouldn't be able to take possession until probably like later fall, early next year. Okay. So I wouldn't really consider those to be available to people that uh, to, 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 to like considered buy right now, but um, they, they will come to, to being finished. Uh, I guess overall, with uh, with what's in the most demand, I think that it's probably, I don't mean, townhouses are a really hot commodity right now. They see seem like they're going, going pretty fast. Yeah. Um, what we have seen is, though, the people are starting to want more money for their houses than what's actually... <laughs> Uh, what market value is, which sounds uh, weird because everything's overpriced, and then they're like, I want to overprice it more. Man, so I, I remember the first time I ever tried doing all this stuff, I was like, Yeah, let's go as high as you can. And then you're uh, super surprised that no one even interested. It's like, Why does anyone care about this house? It's beautiful. So I've definitely been on that side of it. Overpriced. It, yeah, it makes a big difference. And yeah. so if it's properly priced, it'll move within still days. But there's a lot of people that are really trying to push um, that that uh, that top dollar, which if your house doesn't show amazing and then fit into what 80% of people are looking for and it needs too much work, it's just not moving. So, but when we say what's in high demand, it's, I mean, to be in, if it's priced right, anything is moving right now, That's right? Key, yeah. Uh, anything. I mean, especially I think it's very hard to find a house in that $400,000 mark, which it's, it's hard. <laughs> See, and that's the whole reason about why you're here, because everyone knows it can be hard, but no one knows why it or how to go about it. Right. So it's, it's nice to have people that we can reach out to that can help us solve these, like, I think we can all agree, like mind, like altering, like blowing your mind changes, stuff that'll blow up your whole life because it's such a huge step that you have to take. It, it's interesting. The other day I was with some clients and a new property came to market. It was on Lind. And we were one of the first agents in it that day, put an offer in immediately, ended up getting into a multiple offer scenario. We ended up winning out on it, was, but it was that we were in there first. Yeah. Like you have to get there to market. There's Timing. not like I will see it in two to three days. Yeah. If it's a good property, it's gone. Well, the market doesn't wait for anybody. No, and, <laughs> doesn't and wait they, for me. They learn very, <laughs> they work very quickly when 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 the when something comes on the market, right? Like, yeah. prime example, I had a client that uh, new client we talked months ago. They phoned me about a property that was listed on Cascade last week. It was gone in two hours, and they were like, "You can't be kidding me! It's it's not gone already." And it's like, no, it's signed, sealed, and you know, more than likely, we'd just be looking at it as as maybe a backup offer. But you know, realistically, I would say probably. You know that four to seven hundred is in extremely high demand for right. people. Um, that is a lot of you know we sell all different types of homes, but at the same time, is that a lot of our demographic is in there, and there is a lot of multiple offers that are going like Greg said for the homes that are in great shape and well taken care of and move-in ready. Yeah, is it when people aren't having to look at doing renovations, the costs, the timelines, the inconveniences for their families, the homes that are move-in ready, they're going for top dollar. 
Yeah. Man, that was well said. That was very well said. And you actually <laughs> touched on something I want to get into too as well. It's like, what exactly, what kind of houses do you sell? Because a lot of people can get pigeonholed into, you know, they only do this type or they only do this type when in reality, you know, and you guys are a great example. You're doing everything, man. You're going back and forth. And maybe touch on that a little bit about the For type sure. of homes you sell. For sure. Well, Saskatoon's a small community at the end of the day. And is it to, to focus on one particular style of market or type of market in Saskatoon isn't really feel feasible as yeah, an agent. Um, you know, I found a, lo a lot of it is that as we've grown in our careers, you know, like I've been in the real estate business for 17 years. Greg's a little bit longer than me. Um, is that we've grown with our clients, but we still sell anything from you know, $100,000 condos to potentially multi-million dollar, you know, acreages or, or single or um, single family homes in Saskatoon. So it's a really wide range, but um, we also find that we've grown with our clients and now is that we're not just selling for our clients that so we've taken care of them, but now we're helping maybe their parents move from, from that next property into, and to yeah. get them onto the next stage of that life. I, I'd also like to add that a, a lot of our clients, I mean, they've got to different places in their lives and they can afford more expensive yeah. homes and so forth and so Bro. and now they've chosen us to either help them buy those those more expensive houses or then to sell them sometimes uh those expensive houses stay on the market a little bit longer so it might be that people might think we just specialize in more the luxury market because that's the one they see all because the time. that's when they yeah. see all the time and and nobody sees on our website uh, the, the property that sells for 450000 yeah. that sells the first day on market and they <laughs> sells for $40,000 over because yeah. of what we've done. So they don't really see that. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess I was just adding to, to what Ryan had to say Well, there. you also, and, and you brought something else that I find very interesting is how do you actually price these houses? What goes into the work to realize, you know, this is going to be the magic number you want to work with? Is there a magic formula there? Now there is. <laughs> <laughs> Again, growing. Yeah, right? that's what growing yeah. is. And it's like <laughs> Ryan know? and I. So we sit down and we try to figure out how to answer these questions. Yeah. And and it's interesting because back in the day we would look at what sold in the last ninety days in one neighborhood, and you'd be able to come up with twenty six comparables, and then you'd pick the five best comparables, and you'd be like, oh man, the kitchen's exactly the same. Okay, I think this is where yeah. we can go with it. Yeah. Check mark, check yeah. mark, check mark. And now it's like, I just, I was just putting an offer on a property and we're trying to find value yesterday. And I pulled, it's a bungalow and we we're looking in Willow Grove. So it was Willow Grove and Evergreen. And we pulled up the last month's comparables. There's only seven that had sold, <laughs> seven that had sold and that were a buy level bungalow or raised bungalow. And our comparables range from a $230,000 uh, townhouse to a $1.35 million dollar house. And I was like, How do you do okay, that? where do we find the, where do we find the price on this? Where right. Do we start? First yeah. off, I'm saying there's not many available. So I guess if you find something you love, you might as well jump on it. Cause you don't want to know when the what, next one's coming up. But I think there's quite a few different things that we use. One is we try to use those comparables. We now use probably more than ever replacement costs, especially when you're finding properties that are maybe located in newer neighborhoods that are, that are, um, I guess, infills that we call them. And so we're just looking at what, what would it cost to rebuild this and what can we maximize the dollar for it? Um, and then there was another one that I'm missing on. Was it the, uh, in income? Income so approach for rental properties. Approach. But the other idea behind it is, is to actually, when we go into and do an evaluation, the first thing that we're looking at is that what upgrades have been done on these properties. Yeah. Okay. And, keep in mind is that just because someone put in a new furnace doesn't mean that you're you know you added an eight thousand dollar furnace doesn't mean that your value in your house is worth eight thousand dollars more you yeah. know so is it for us it's a lot about being able to go in and understand the value of what consumers are going to find value in right uh -huh. so if it's maybe if it's a kitchen that's 30 years old and you know we're comparing it to some of that's 15 right is that we have to be able to educate the buyer or the seller on on where the that consumer is going right. to find value right yeah. so it's not always, you know, I know a lot of people, they say, well, I built a garage and it cost me $40,000. And it's like, well, the net new guy doesn't like your garage and or maybe the color of it, or maybe he would have done it a little bit differently. So for him to pay the exact dollar value of what you paid, he doesn't find value in that. So a lot of it's understanding where consumers are finding value in used homes and then being able to re relay that to the sellers so we can price them accordingly. And I can imagine as well with that interaction as you go through that process, 
and you're talking to a client, they tell you the things that they find valuable, right? So mm -hmm. you would take that and you would incorporate it into this. And it's just so happens we're in such a strange time where, like you say, all of that can go in. It used to be able to go into all of these homes. And now the pool is so small that when you get that feeling like, I need this place, you got to jump on it. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the another thing that we look at when we're we're looking at pricing those houses is looking at from a buyer's perspective as well too. Yeah. So it's sure. looking at from both sides because a lot of times if you're just looking at from the seller's perspective, you could be off on it, right? Oh, yeah. So it be blinded uh, by all the awesomeness that they're showing you and telling you when in reality in your head you're like, well, this is valuable to you, but I can see someone else seeing this and not putting the same amount of value into it. For sure. And so then we try to help that seller see it from a buyer's point of view. They don't always no, see, I can imagine right? That like, process, I, I think sure. that the biggest thing is that on the selling side, everybody, I don't think there's many people that don't want more for their home. So because it's their largest investment That's and it. usually people want way more money than usually what market value is. Yep. Um, so it, it's, it's an interesting challenge that we have continually. But I mean, we're pretty good at it. We just listed a house on Poplar. And so we listed that at seven ninety nine, knowing that it would go multiple offers and the client took some time. They've lived there for 31 years. They were able to go through and help declutter their property and get it ready for market. And now we're going to be presenting offers on Thursday. So there's a different strategy also, not just on price, about how we go about creating exposure and stuff for yeah. properties. And like how much time you have to go through the process and all those different little things. And that's, I guess, that's literally your job, right? That's where you come in is to help the customer figure that out. For sure. And everybody's got a different strategy, That's right? Boring. Yeah. Because we need to meet that client and understand, okay, what's your timelines? Like, where can we meet you at? And then this will be then the roadmap that we create. Because we always look at it as like, we're a team, right? Yes. If you decide to hire us, now we work together. We're a team. I mean, we'll give you our feedback. I mean, if you feel comfortable or not, we'll, we'll figure out how we do this together to get that that outcome that we we need right in the long run it's meeting the timelines for possession that works best for them but then it's also then trying to maximize that dollar absolutely well boys it's been a fantastic chat as always anything else you guys want to close on here you want to put anything out there well like always is that if you have any um i guess ideas of any podcast that yeah. would be an interest to our consumers out there please feel free to reach out and give us a call um i guess the other thing is that we don't just do podcasts we actually sell real <laughs> estate on this on this network as well too so you know feel free to give either greg or i a call is we'd be happy to guide you and maybe give you that uh strategic plan for your property yeah absolutely well said well done, fellas. It's been another edition of the Bamford & Co. Podcast. My name is Gary. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for another incredible edition next week. Thanks a lot, boys. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Gary. Thanks for the sleeves, bud.